So, if you know, USC found a gem in Keaton Slovis. But this video isn't about him. We're going to be talking about who he backed up at the beginning of the season and took over after his injury, JT Daniels. If you're from California and like football, you knew who this kid was even before USC. Homegrown, played at modern day, and um, he was a monster in high school. Watch. JT Daniels was a four-star recruit at a high school. His stats were crazy. His sophomore year, he terrorized high school defenses and had no mercy. His sophomore year, he threw for 4,849 yards with an average of 346.4 yards per game. Just straight torching defenses. He also threw for a total of 67 touchdowns that season while only throwing, get this, six interceptions that season. Out of 423 attempts, he only has six that went the other way. For his high school stats, he accumulated a total of 12,014 passing yards, 152 total touchdowns, averaging 239 yards a game, and only threw 14 interceptions in three seasons on 1,101 pass attempts. The guy knew how to sling a football. With his standout season as a sophomore throwing the ball, he wasn't done growing as an athlete. Although his production saw a decline throwing the ball, it was because he decided to work on running with the ball and becoming a mobile quarterback. He went from rushing only 37 yards and two touchdowns his sophomore year to rushing for a total of 561 yards with nine touchdowns. Talk about jumping numbers for a young kid in high school. JT also decided to skip his senior year of high school to enroll early into USC to get ahead a bit. With all this, it was easy to see why he was so highly recruited out of high school and the hometown kid wanted to stay close to home. So he picked up his offer at USC. He was a new hope for the Trojan football program, and with his modern-day brother, Amon Ross St. Brown, who was a four-star recruit out of high school with offers from top colleges, he decided to join JT at SC. They seemed to be the new duo at USC. The hype was building, till it didn't. He brought excitement for the Trojans before the 2018 season, although the Trojans were on a bumpy road due to poor coaching and poor care from their AD at the time. JT was a new talent, and with Sam Darno being drafted earlier that spring, he came in at the right time. Although much wasn't expected out of USC in 2018, the coaching proved that right with a terrible offense that was ran. And yes, I'm getting my shots off on T. Martin and Clay Helton. 2018 for JT Daniels, he was going into a shaky situation with coaching being slightly terrible, new recruits barely getting their first college experience, and overall no established connection between players. But it was fine because people were prepared to watch the squad grow together and the fans knew they had to be patient. 2018 was a roller coaster for USC's football team, yet JT had a decent season for a freshman. Let's talk numbers. Here, Daniels had a completion percentage of 59.5%, completing majority of his passes, also averaged 7.4 yards per pass, which showed he was able to put the ball downfield, and throwing the ball for a total of 2,672 yards that season, while having one of the worst games a quarterback can have. Yeesh. But you can't be hard on him. He was only a true freshman, and USC was facing a lot of adversity, so it was acceptable under his circumstances. He showed he was able to produce even while having a high school coach as his head coach at USC. So 2018 ends, USC decides to keep Clay. They bring in Graham Harrow as their offensive coordinator to help the lackluster offensive scheme from last year. Let me sidetrack for a fun fact. While in the NFL, Graham Harrow backed up Aaron Rodgers, A.A. Ron, A. Rod. The guy who could throw a football a million yards. And oh yeah, the Hail Mary. But I think, can the receivers get far enough down the field? Rodgers in trouble. It's going to get there. He turned 32 yesterday. Does he have a vintage moment in him? In the end zone, it is caught for the win! Rich also, I thought it was funny while I was doing my research, but Harrow has probably one of the saddest looking pro football reference pages. I mean, they didn't even bother to put a picture of the guy, and he only played one season in Green Bay, 2012. <laughs> Anyways, that doesn't matter. They wanted Harold for his brain, his football knowledge, and not bad to have a guy who got to pick the brain of a Super Bowl champ. Anyways, back to JT. USC felt they had something brewing. With new recruits coming in like Drake London, top O-line and D-line prospects, USC was on a slow slope upwards. So fast forward to 2019, and USC, as a top program, have this hype surrounding them with their new young squad on both sides of the ball. So, 
Week one rolls around, August 31st, the day USC football would change. USC gets Fresno State for their first game, which seems like a pretty good game in favor of USC. See, JT Daniels was riding smooth through his first game. He was making plays, making his reads, and playing good football. Matter of fact, he drove the Trojans defense down the field in their first possession and threw an 8-yard pass to Stephen Carr. Extra point was good, Trojans up 7. Then, JT on his second possession, still up 7 thanks to his defense, drives the ball 30 yards to allow his running backs to score on a 14-yard rushing touchdown. And JT was cooking the Fresno State defense and getting help from his teammates. Things are going better than expected. Although, mid-second quarter, he throws an interception, but the USC defense holds Fresno State's offense to no yards. And then, the madness ensues. Third and four, at the Fresno 15, JT drops back, and this happens. Gut wrenching, you know. You, you see a kid that's poured so much into the game and into this team and into his um, uh, becoming better, uh, both physically, mentally, uh, as a as a quarterback. Um, and you know, said a prayer as soon as I saw it, and, and I'm hoping that we get the get the best results tomorrow. We'll see where it lies. JT is seen in pain on the floor, which is never a good sign when your future quarterback is on the floor in pain. They cart JT off, and he comes back later in the game in crutches, to support his team on the sideline. USC went on to win the game by the score of 31 to 23. Now everyone is speculating as the results of JT Daniels injuries were unknown. It would finally come to light weeks later, an MRI showed JT had torn his meniscus in ACL and was done for the season. It had seemed that USC was done for too, till Keaton took over college football. Catch, play fake, toward the corner, Vaughn's what a catch! Touchdown! Wow, what a play that was. Keaton went on to perform amazing for a true freshman and shocked a lot of people. JT with a spot taken, at least it seems for right now. And he's recently made it known he possibly wants to transfer. And he's entered the transfer portal. Major focus on the possibly, JT is very much just seeing his options. And has also made it known a return to USC isn't out of the picture. Although his future is unknown, Right now, he definitely has some life-changing decisions to make soon. And I can't imagine the stress and thought that has to go into a decision like this. Going from high school phenom, to college star, to being outperformed by your backup, is a lot to take in. I wish nothing but the best for JT, and the best of luck to him for whatever decision he makes. Hey guys, thank you guys for checking out the video. Really appreciate it. Um, if you guys like what you saw, go ahead and leave a like. Um, if you guys wanna see more content like this, uh, go ahead and subscribe. And um, if you didn't like what you saw, um, go ahead and dislike and let me know in the comments what I did wrong or any, you know, uh, critiques. I'll be reading them for sure. And um, yeah, thank you guys for checking out the video again. And um, catch y'all later. Peace.